Hey guys, Matt Bragg of Rice University Baseball. Hope everyone's doing great. Um, what an amazing game we get to play baseball. And it's just around the corner. I'm telling you, it's going to happen soon that we're going to be out playing ball again. Um, just wanted to share some drills and tips with you that you can do at home, on your own even, um, during this time to continue to get better. Because a lot of times guys are like, oh, you know, I don't need... Go work, go get better. And today we're going to go through four drills and then we're going to finish with some games that you can do all on your own as long as you have your mom and dad's permission to do them. All right, so we're going to get started first with drill number one. This is the simplest drill you'll ever see in your life. When you play this game of baseball, okay, this game is so mental, even when you're young and little, because this game, if you happen to strike out or make an error or whatever, our first inclination as a ball player is like slump the shoulders and oh no, and that's where the word slump came from by the way, slumping the shoulders, oh man, don't do it, don't get caught in that trap. Mentally, we've got to what I call drill number one, burrow the brow. So watch my eyebrows, see how I go from like kind of deer in the headlights, eyes are wide open, almost scared looking, don't do that, don't get caught in that trap. You want, watch my eyebrows, you want to burrow the brow. See how my eyebrows kind of drop down? That lets me know I'm ready to go, I'm ready to hit, I'm ready to pitch, play defense, coach, whatever you need. That's drill number one. Simplest drill you could ever do for this game. Drill number two is called the attack drill. And it's, it is what it sounds like. We're gonna get into an attack position to hit the ball. You will need a tee for this drill. So, and then if you wanna hit against the house like I'm getting ready to do, just some uh, wiffle balls, something like that would be fine. But again, ask your parents to make sure that it's okay. The attack drill, we're going to get into a good, basically it's a power position into a load position here. Very athletic position, okay? And what we want to feel is we want to feel our hands back, almost like a rubber band pulling your front side back where you can see some lines in your shirt because your hands are in a good attack position. You want to check and you stop right here you want to check yourself and see if the barrel of the bat is in an imaginary window above your head and if it is you're ready to attack the baseball so let's see what we got up here attack okay we're going to go again now some things i'm looking at doing right here as i'm in this position okay i get to this position i don't want to reload and restart to hit i want to hit from this position. This is my attack power position. The reason we call it attack is because you're going from point A to point C, which is contact. What we want to avoid is B, the bad zone, the belt, down here by the belt. You want to go from point A to point C, not A, B, C. And that's the, this alphabet, we don't have a B. We go from A to C. So again, I'm gonna get into attack position. I should feel some turn, inward turn right here. And then I'm gonna, boom, I'm gonna go attack the baseball. So that is drill number two. Drill number three is our wall drill number one. Okay, and what this is, all you need is a bat. I've got a wiffle ball bat here. You need a wall or a basketball pole, a fence, a net something you can use where you can stand away from it. This is our drill number three. And, and what this drill is, it's called wall drill one. We're gonna basically square our body to the wall like I'm a basketball player guarding the wall or the fence or the pole or whatever it may be. I'm then gonna stick my hand straight out about an inch or two from the wall. And then my, my purpose of the drill is to, you know how we just talked about the bad zone, the B zone? If I swing this back, down here in the B zone, I'm gonna hit the wall. And that's why you wanna use a wiffle ball bat, okay? It won't hurt the bat or the wall. But if I do my A point A attack to point C contact, I might barely nick the wall with the end of my bat, or I may not hit it at all. My bat speed to hit the ball hard and far, I want out in front. If I'm going through the B zone and hitting the wall, my bat speed is back here. That's not where we want it. So this is about pulling the hands in and hitting the inner third of the baseball. Great for young hitters. Here we go. I'm there. I'm in my stance. I'm ready. Boom. Barely clipped it. I'm going to see if I can not hit the wall at all this time. 
Just nicked it. One more. Boom, there we go. So that's drill number three, wall drill number one. Okay, our fourth and final drill of the day is called wall drill number two. And again, it's making a short, quick, fast to the ball with our bat speed out in front of our body. What you're gonna do on this drill is you're gonna get again beside a, the wall, the fence, a post, a net, something of that nature. Again, with like a wiffle ball bat. You're gonna put your arm down at a 90 degree angle from your shoulder, kind of this area here. You're gonna get it about an inch from the wall. This is my back side. So a right-handed hitter, you're gonna go like this, okay? So I'm here, my back side here. My objective of the drill is to not hit the wall as I make my swing, as I go from my attack position to contact. If I hit the wall, that means I'm going down here in the B zone, the bad zone. Remember this alphabet, we skip the letter B. Okay, so here's what we've got. I've got my positioning, okay, a good athletic base. I'm gonna get set up and see if I can do this. Boom, okay, see if I can do it. Boom, okay, now let's see if I do it wrong, what happens? Right there, okay? You don't wanna go there. So one more, let's make one more really good one. Bang, all right? So that's drill number four. Now we're getting ready to get into some fun stuff. Okay, now we're gonna get into some games. And what we're gonna do, this game is up the middle game. We are trying to hit the ball up the middle, period. We can't move further away from the house until we hit our spot on the wall. And we'll show you that in just a minute. One thing I wanna go over, guys, when you're using a tee, it is very important, once my front foot lands and I'm in that attack position, that my front foot for a ball down the middle is basically even, maybe the ball is slightly, the tee is slightly out front, closer to the pitcher than my foot. But that's very important when setting up a tee, that when that front foot lands on a ball down the middle, it's basically aligned with my front foot. All right, now, what we've got, at this first line, we've got three plates. We took uh, chalk and drew a home plate here. We drew a home plate there. We drew a home plate there. 33 feet, 22 feet, and 11 feet from where we're aiming, from our objective. We have five opportunities, five opportunities to get all the way back to the 33 foot line. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you and we're gonna see how far I can get in five swings. Okay, in this game, I'm trying to hit this pole right in the middle, and once I do that, I can move back. Now, you may have something different you aim for at your house. Maybe bigger, maybe smaller if you're really, really good. Let's see what I got. Swing number one. All for one. Swing number two, I got five chances. There we go. Now what I'll do is I'll move back to the second plate. Once I get it, I would move back to the third plate. See how quick I can get to the third plate in five swings. That's game number one. Okay, here's game number two, very similar to the first game. If you pick a target on your house or on your garage and make sure you have your parents' permission before you do any of this. But what we're doing, again, our target is this middle pull up the middle. It's the best spot to hit a baseball in the whole field. Most hits are up the middle. It's where your power is at, okay? So what we've got here is this game now, there are these same three plates, 11 feet, 22 feet, and 33 feet. You decide the distance for your game. But this play is worth one point, okay? So when I hit this one, I got one point. The second plate that's now 22 feet away in our game is worth three points. And then all the way back at 33 feet down here on the sidewalk, this plate is worth five points. The way the game is played and how it's a little bit different from the first one, there's points involved. We're still aiming for a target. You cannot, you have five swings. You cannot move back plates until you hit it. So I can't move from the first plate to the second plate until I hit my target, okay? Can't do it. But your last swing, you can move anywhere on the field or court you want. So let's say my buddy, hits his first ball, gets one point. His second ball from the second plate, he hits it and gets three more points. He's at four, but he comes back to plate number, the furthest plate away, 
and doesn't get any more points. He has four points. Let's say it's my turn, and my first four swings on the short plate, I don't get any points. Well, my fifth swing, I can go anywhere on the field. So I choose to go to this far plate because it's worth five. Let's say I get it, and it's the only one I got the whole round. I got five points because of that one big swing. He only got four, I win. And guess what, in baseball, sometimes it just comes down to that one big important swing. That's game number two. All right, this game is probably my favorite game. It's called gap to gap is where it's at. And basically we're hitting, again, gap to gap, we're thinking right center to left center, right center to left center from each side of our garage. And the way this game is scored is like a real baseball game. We're hitting off a tee or someone can toss to you. And I'm gonna show you what, what, what is the point system. Emmy, our daughter, is going to point to the garage doors. Those are singles. The garage doors are singles. It's got to hit the doors in the air, otherwise it's an out. The two poles on the end of each side of the garage are doubles. If it hits those, it's a double. Now really where we're focusing again is up the middle. The pole in the middle is a triple, a three-bagger. Then anything above the garage doors up to that gray box Pretend there's an imaginary line across from that gray box is a home run. Any ball that goes outside the pools is an out. Any ball that goes above the gray lines, like that window up top that got broke earlier today, is an out. Any ball that hits the ground first is an out. Okay. By the way, the window only got broke because I was out here hitting the wrong type of balls. Moms and dads, make sure the balls are soft, squeezable, or wiffle balls. You won't have the same problem we just had. All right, let's get to work and do it. Thanks, Emmy. Okay, so here we are getting ready to play the live game with singles, doubles, triples, home runs. Luke, our son, came out to join us. He's going to hit a little bit right here. The game goes just like a baseball game. Three outs is the inning is over, the next person, or you pretend and be another team and hit until you make three outs again. We're keeping track of runs. Let's see how a few swings go. So that is a single off the garage. Have a run run first, no one out. That's a home run. Above the garage, the brick, there are now two runs in, no one out. Inning continues. Another home run, three runs in, no outs. Hey, Luke, kind of roll over and tap one into the ground. Just nice and easy. That would be an out, one out. And you play until three outs. You go five innings, three innings, seven innings, nine inning game, whatever you want. Guys, thanks for your time today. We really enjoyed talking some baseball and having a lot of fun. You guys have a great day and keep getting better.